There we go. Checking audio. How do I sound? Hopefully uh, the music's not too loud. <laughs> I sound like a guy. Okay, I guess that's good. <clears throat> Helping. I need a little rainbow, little rainbow emote like the uh, uh, the more you know emote but helping ah. <clears throat> so I learned a little bit and it only took me 20 some odd miniatures for critical role but I put the base down for Puma and I just put a base coat on it so I won't have to be awkward and uh, screw up the base a whole bunch. I also discovered that for uh, for Jester, it was just, I didn't have enough glue. Like, I tried putting a base coat down on it and I was pulling off the sand like an idiot. So. Chite happens. <clears throat> Anyhow. Numat Pumat. Uh, Pumi Prime here. Let's get him started. 
He's got a bunch of extra goodies on him. Oh, we're washed out, ain't we? Holy crap! Where is my webcam? That needs to be adjusted. Wow. Camera control, camera control. Bring the light down just a little bit. He's going to be super bright for a little bit. <clears throat> Pretty sure. But he's got a lot of extra fancy. Pumat Prime. He's got goggles and stuff. And also a little extra filigree on his uh, robe. And he's got the gloves. Yeah, he's got these, like, strap on his forehead with uh, some lenses on it. He's got some actual, like, fancy cuffs for his sleeves. Um, you can see his arm under here. So he still has the short sleeves, but then he's got these bracers on. And I say they're bracers because I can see his knuckle detail really, really well. So I'm going to use them as, like, fancy cuffs. Ooh. <clears throat> Formal product photos are important. All right. So I'm going to start again with the uh, Hormigant purple. And uh, because it is a undercoat, I'm not going to worry too much. about getting it on other things. So let's just get it taken care of here. How is everybody this week? I'm not, you know what? I didn't say welcome to the workshop because I was just chatting right away. So welcome to the workshop, everybody. Hopefully your week is going well. Ash draws. Ash draws. I don't recognize. I did. I do. Were you here earlier this week? Did I? Am I misremembering user IDs? Am I misremembering handles? I don't recognize. Hello. How are you? Welcome to the workshop. If I keep on pace for the Pumats, I should. I should finish up Pumat Prime tonight. And in the middle of things drying, I'll also do some more work on the base of Jester to make sure she's complete. And by the end of the evening, we should have all of Delirium's Critical Role figures done. And then it's just pictures and handing them over when it's safe to do so. He's got his hands nice and folded. And like, I'm not worried about getting on the... Uh, Getting on the base down here, or getting on his other bits, because we'll be painting other layers over this. My concern is keeping the paint smooth, as you all know. Hey, Asian Dragon! How's it going? Hopefully it's not super late where you are. <laughs> You're at the gym? Be safe, man. Be safe. I, I'd be I'd be worried as hell about going to a gym right now. I wouldn't want to touch anything. All the all the sweaty folks, sweating all over everything. I'd be convinced I'd be out coming out of there all swole and then covered in COVID. So 
I would be super nervous. Take care of yourself. Are you like on a Stairmaster or something working on them glutes? I forgot, you're in the other direction. Or you're very far in... No. I'm going crazy. How are you chatting? You get a third arm? I don't know if that was an appropriate question to ask. Cool. So you're responsible. I'd just be worried about other people not being... It would make me very nervous. Alright. So this one. This one is definitely gonna be a nice dark purple I want his robe to be all purple and stuff and I was also thinking I was also thinking about uh, considering all the other sleeves we've got we've got green we've got yellow we've got black I was almost gonna do I was thinking about doing orange here um, that makes sense. That makes sense. Hello, everybody. I've got 15 people hanging out, man. That's awesome. I don't know. I don't know, Asia, because they're, you're intimidating. <laughs> you're out there pumping iron and intimidating people. Uh, what color to do the sleeves? I think... Oh, I had! I had 15 people, now I've got nothing. No, I'm just kidding. Now it's only 10. That's okay. So I'm going to do the boots with a little bit of dark flesh tone as a base coat. Soon we'll start getting the rest of the base coats done. I primed him white this evening. How's the uh, focus? Looks like we're okay. Actually, I primed him white this afternoon. It was not this evening that I did this. I actually I actually prepared somewhat ahead of time, surprisingly enough. He's even got fancier boots. I'm gonna have to uh, pop him off the handle to get the little bits in between. Hey man, everyday everyday accomplishments. Going to the gym counts as far as I'm concerned because I know that I would have a hard time hitting it every day. I've been doing my exercising every morning and whenever I get up early enough. So I've only missed one this week. But trying to be healthy. The week's been doing this weird thing for me where it's been like, 
a day will drag and I won't feel like I got anything good done. And then all of a sudden it's Thursday and I blinked. Well, I remember that from when I did roller derby. Like if I didn't hit practice, if I wasn't consistent and I didn't stay practicing, and then I tried to uh, I tried to jam a match for like two minutes, best speed, I'd burn out. It was ridiculous. This week also might have been strange because I uh, I worked on I've been working on Critical Role minis for like straight through since I did Jester on Thursday last week and then I did her again on Tuesday because I was having fun and wanted to finish. Getting up on his ankles, which are super hard to reach for some reason under his robe. Is this robe different than the others? Crazy face. care of his boots. I don't know if uh, Karu WS9 or Pink uh, Pink Lunar Inferno are around, but if you are, thank you very much for stopping in and hitting the follow yesterday while I was offline. My guess is that they came from Brush for Hire's stream as I popped in to say hello and he immediately, like, gave me a shout-out. Crazy guy. I had a question for him. What is this one? So he's got some fancy... He's got a big collar here and everything. I'm thinking purple and, like, the orange will look really good because it's close to gold. So that was my thought. And I also wanted to try contrast paints directly onto white and see what happened. So I'm gonna grab I'm gonna grab this I end in yellow contrast. Hus Brandon, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the workshop. I don't recognize the name. I'm curious about where you showed up from. Thanks for stopping by regardless, and thank you for hitting that follow button. Oh, it gets me up to 156, I think which is fantastic. My little follower goal ticker is incorrect. So the trick with these contrast paints is that they separate real hard. Nice. Yep, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Tuesdays and Thursdays, how's Brandon? That's me, currently. What are you working on? <laughs> yeah, we're just here chilling out, having a nice time, being nice and relaxed. Nice. You're painting for your players. That's a dedicated DM right there. That is a dedicated DM. I try and paint for my DMs because... I don't really, I'm not a, I'm not a good DM or an experienced DM. No, I'm just not a good DM. I haven't really tried that much. Um, and I know that they do tons of prep and do a great job. So I try and get some, he's done for them. Got some big honking dragons on my shelf. How doth thou run a D and D camp? If I may ask. This is a little experiment. Like I said, I'm gonna try these contrast. I'm gonna try a contrast paint directly across white because I want to see what happens. And it's a very watery paint, or I'm gonna pull it straight out of the pot. And 
I'm just going to kind of liberally apply it to the sleeve places. Do a little cheat magic here. It's funny how having the right tools for the job make things a heck of a lot easier. So I'm going to have to go in and I'm going to have to redo his collar to get it to the right spot. But this is going to come out a pretty nice golden yellow. Uh, I've got Vallejo paints, I've got Army Painter paints, I've got Citadel paints, and I have Privateer Press paints. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, this is Vallejo and, uh, Army Painter War paints. There's a little of each in there. Yeah, I think there's like 80 Vallejo paints and 75 Army Painter paints. I've also got some on my desk, on my little shelfy thing on the side here. It's a little fold stand tray table thing. Um, that's where I have some of the... I got a lot of the contrast paints and the foundation paints and the washes from Citadel. So this is just a matte white Army Painter War paints matte white um, because I want to do the collar real quick. Touch up the corners and then when it's dry I'll hit that with that contrast paint as well. I'm going to use the brush to kind of thin this out here so I can get the white paint over it. Considering uh, Delirium got me the game color set of the uh, Vallejo there on the wall to paint these guys, um, it means that after this evening they will be totally paid off. means I just have to deliver the miniatures at that point. Um, not really. After you're finished painting them, uh, if you go over it with like a satin varnish or a matte varnish or something like that or even a gloss and then hit it with a matte, uh, it should take care of the majority of those lines. Think of think of those think of those things as kind of like a wax. He's got a little collar going on in here. That might do it. Uh, I don't usually worry about it too much, although it sounds to me like you are following the general th rule of thumb that I like to follow, which is keep your paint layers nice and slim and thin and light. Yeah, you can do a matte then a gloss or a gloss first. Uh, any of the varnishes I think are going to help take that away because uh, whenever you're doing transfers and the thing is, is you're going to have it, the, the little lines are probably going to act a lot like the edges of a water transfer decal. Um, so if you go in there and you do the varnishing over those those little ridge areas, the little print lines, uh, you will probably be able to take most of that texture away if you're looking for an extra smooth space. That is my suggestion. I usually don't mind, so. Yep. 
Uh, it's it certainly should be a meme. Anybody who has been in my Twitch stream more than once will realize that I say it all the darn time. I'm like, keep the paint thin. You want your coats thin. You want your paint smooth. It's funny that Twitch chat thought that everyone dot its is a URL or something because it tried to make a link out of it. <laughs> All right, so this collar, should I stick with the purple for the collar or should I do the white into the yellow? Let's hit the purple and find out. All right, I'm gonna base coat with royal purple. We're gonna go in with the royal purple base. It's nice and dark. Oh, and I've been using my uh, my number one, Artist Opus Series S number one brush. For the majority of this. So far. Just letting it play around it, all of the textures. I'm just doing this is a, this is the first layer of purple. So again, as long as it's smooth, I will be happy. Nice even coat always what we're looking for. This purple is going on pretty well. So this is this is why I don't worry too much when you work from the middle of the mass of the model upward because we're always going to be coming over that layer next so once things dry up a little bit it makes it easy to just come in and take care of these layers Everybody who has never been here before, meet Katessa. Katessa is my wife. She is currently upstairs with my daughter. And they are most likely hanging out and watching the stream while she gets ready for bed. It's a family show.
So I'm doing my best to maintain all of the detail on this figure. He's got a lot of little interesting filigree in this robe. He's got some like designs on the back of it that I want to keep and almost what looks like suspenders which would be kind of fun. So gotta make sure I can see those lines as I work my way around and get everything purpled up properly. Not too bad. Not too bad, Dad. Flat Trudeau is my dad. He's a regular. He's a regular, not he is irregular. Although that statement isn't necessarily incorrect either, as we are all a little bit strange and unusual. <laughs> the question is, Improper and I, is it your biggest fan? Yeah, there you go. She'd probably end up being extra toasty if she was on a lap, I imagine. Uh, this one is Pumat Prime. So he is the one that cast the spell to make all the extra copies of himself to help himself in his workshop. So these are all the boys. And soon we will have the last one in place. He will be, this one is the one who's nominally in charge. I imagine so. Um, I was, I was given four of them. Three of them are identical. And then the fourth one has some of the extra bits, a little bit of extra fanciness going on. So. <laughs> Yeah, the character is called Pumat Sol, or Pumat Sol, S O L. He is a furbog, I think, is what they're referring to that race as. And I know that it's not necessarily like that name has been used for a couple of different looking critters uh, in D and D over the years, so. I've got to get used to it in this instance. He is an enchanter. He makes cool magical items and runs a little shop in a big city that adventurers occasionally come to and give him lots of gold pieces for his creations to purchase them so that they may go off on adventures and hopefully come back successful with more gold pieces to 
purchase more fantastic items. So the cycle may continue. Yeah, most likely. <clears throat> But like I remember, it was like third edition. Furbolgs were uh, on the giant spectrum. They were not friendly whatsoever. They were not remotely nice looking. They were big meanies. So when they uh, when they changed things up and in the critical role stream made them sort of cutesy. I mean, not like cutesy cutesy, but like socially acceptable attractiveness level, not monster level. Yeah, he's a super friendly furball. Or as some call it, fearbolgs, depending on how they want to pronounce the I. Although if they do that, it sounds to me more like some sort of nightmare creature. But it might be closer to the actual pronunciation, because I, I mean, who am I to say? I am not a linguistics or ancient language professor. bit of bubbles going on here so let me uh, fix that getting around the brush side getting on his tool belt for the power of the internet. worse things to use it for. I don't mind the idea that you can give us some historical contextual research Operandi's got your back there, hon. She even posted the link. Because she has that kind of power. All right, the question is, do I want to do the collar in purple as well? I feel like if I do it in the, uh, the golden orange, orangey yellow, might look better. I feel like it, this this sleeve color is a little too close to the sleeve color of the first one that I did. So we might change that up. I'm trying to get under the edges of the robe and not leave any weird white pokies out. It's kind of tricky. I don't want to get over the boots too much. I 
and I'm gonna have to redo this as the belt anyway and the belt and the belt pouch and stuff but I'm not really super worried about it I'll come back to that Those are looking pretty good. So how's Brandon? I wanted to come back around. I've done a lot of Hero Forge miniatures as well. Um, I've got a stack of them up behind me on the shelf. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, 12. I've probably done 15 or 20 of them at least and that's like in the past year yellow and that yellow are pretty close it's not too bad though it's almost a golden yellow I think it looks kind of nice with the purple maybe we'll keep it maybe we'll keep it uh, if I do so because the uh, color wasn't coating terribly well I'm going to try one more light coat of the white that I have here, and then if that doesn't work, I'm going to go to uh, the base coat Citadel paint, this guy right here, the Wraith Bone, which is more of a bone white, but it means that I can get a regular white over it. I might need to do it on the edges anyway because down here the purple is overpowering the white So who watched the uh, live Critical Role episode last Thursday? I hung out and watched it until the break and then it was, you know, getting close to midnight so I figured I'd take a nap and then I finished it off later. everybody welcome to the workshop hit the wrong one don't mind me wasn't going AFK yeah my follower ticker is not functioning properly so why don't we just uh, where is it sub goal buy that can go away it's just not working blah 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 So I'm going to use a little bit of this Averland Sunset base coat from Citadel uh, because I would like for the purple around his, I mean for the yellow around his collar to work out properly. So, And also I'd like to do it on the bracers. 
And I want to get it right up against that purple. So we're going to use it as like a border. So he's got these little cuffs that stick down. And I'm just going to use it very lightly across the sort of fabric that's sticking out from under this cuff. It is a champagne cork. It also works as a low budget handle with a little bit of blue tack. At the moment, I have no blue tack, so I am using the more expensive Citadel handle. See you later. Thank you for stopping in and saying hello. Good job with the workout. So we're going to work our way around. Again, this is just sort of the stage where I get in and try and make sure we've got a good divide on all of uh, the color borders. So I get the nice base coat down on everything. And then in the latter half of the stream, we start cranking through the details and the highlights. And it's one of those things where if you bump into, if you do make a little bit of a mistake, it's not that big of a deal. Keep your paints nice and smooth and your layers thin. You can always go back and touch it up. But with practice, you'll get to the point where you don't necessarily make as many mistakes as you would when you started. So things start to move along a little more quickly. But there's always a mistake. Like right there, a little bit of that a little bit of that yellow kind of dipped off onto the purple. So I'm going to clean the brush and use wet bristles and just pull it away. Give it a little bit of a scooch and we'll just kind of we'll take care of it like that. And that's going to be a highlighted space, so it's not going to be too big of a deal. And I'm gonna want to put. We're gonna try. I'm gonna see if it if it works out. I'm gonna put some more of the contrast paint up on the collar because I want to see if it works. I think I got it all covered. So we're gonna go back to the contrast. Pick a bit of it up on the brush. And I'm just going to sort of genuine, generously apply it to the collar so that we add a little bit of a color break border between the purple and the gold because his skin is also a blue purple, which means if it was purple straight up, he would just look kind of monochrome.
But if you do this, If I go over to these bracers and apply a similar amount, contrast paints are a little cheaty. Washes when used properly, contrast paints when used properly, um, they do save you a lot of time. Right. What did I use for the leather? I keep I keep forgetting. Was it just leather? Well, there you go. Tiny little eyedropper, just a little pool of it. I don't even know if you guys can see it. I'm not sure what the camera is focused on at the moment in the uh, in the palette. We're just gonna gently go around and get the leather colored in I'm gonna have to start doing longer streams I think I feel like I feel like our time together is very, very fleeting. It's like I get started and we get on a roll, and then the evening is done. But I don't want to interrupt you guys when you're, you know, you probably got stuff to do. If I started any earlier, I'd be like right in the middle of most people's dinner time, our own dinner time here at the house. Tricky picking a good time to start. On Thursdays I could run later, or on Tuesdays and Thursdays I could run later, and sometimes I do. But on Thursdays especially, I'm pretty sure I'd lose a, a couple, at least a couple viewers to the uh, Critical Role live stream. But sometimes I like to watch that myself. If I've got the battery life to stick to it and stay up late enough. Not gonna lie, sometimes I don't. He's got a little pouch right here. A separate little pouch. So he definitely has some extra extra little details and stuff on him being that he is the template for the other guys. So 
so I wonder. The D and D simulacrum spell. I'm fairly certain. States that the copies that are made cannot uh, regain spells or hit points or anything like that. So if any of them, you know, get eventually like run out of spells or hurt themselves or something, maybe there's an accident in the shop, does he have to just... I mean, let them expire? They never get hit points back. It seems weird. Night. Night, hon. Love you. Love you, kiddo. See you in the morning. to make sure I got a nice proper coat for that color. It's one of those colors that doesn't necessarily do a super solid undercoat. strap that goes around his hammer. Definitely see some of the purple color underneath the belt here, so. So he's got a wider strap. This is like a buckled strip right here. So I think I need to do that in yellow. I'm just sort of looking at the details at the moment. Do I have some darker brown? I do have some darker brown that is available. So I want to do the handle of his hammer. My slightly darker color. I'm 
we'll end up coming back and lightening this up a little bit as we do some of the detail stuff but this may have been a better a better brown for some of this anyway so I'm just gonna go back over real quick in the next couple of minutes before we do our nine o'clock stretch just to darken up the belt because I feel like it's a little too pale This is closer to the color of the other guy's gear. He's coming along. Got two minutes, and before I step away, I'm going to base coat his hair. Uh, what was I using? I was using Willard Purple. This is Warlord Purple. This is what I'm using for the base color, base color for Pumat's hair. It's very bright. Just get a nice bit of that on the brush. And we're going to very gently get the beard and the hair. Trying to be particularly careful down around his chin as I'm using a larger brush. But again, these Artist Opus brushes are really, really nice. Even the larger brush has a point and it holds it very well. Which means you can stick with a larger brush and paint more of a miniature, which is kind of nice. Hey, Neff. Are you waving at me or are you waving at somebody else? Or are you waving by to Tess? I don't know. Alright, let's get... Uh, where is his forehead? Aha. Hopefully this week has been treating you okay and you didn't have to be working up until 9 o'clock tonight.
Aha. Well, make sure you don't work tomorrow. Please take care of yourself. here. It always happens. You get a little bit of paint on something. You can always go back and fix it. It's not that big of a deal. Right, let me get that darker brown back here and try to get that strap that's going across his forehead. Yeah, it came out pretty well so far, and uh, again, that's just, the funny part about that is it's literally, uh, most of this is just the the yellow-ish contrast paint across a white undercoat. So he's got sort of the jeweler's monocle thing going on here, and I'm going to do a little bit of a rim around the edge. I'm very carefully going to tuck this back here. So that we get the full color around. Uh, let's see if I can get some more detail. We'll do the whole thing because I can always paint over this. Once I figure out exactly what that is. All right. So let's take a minute. We're going to stretch, stand up, straighten up. Ugh. Now, if you don't have to, because you just got here, but. I would suggest everybody else should stand up for a second. I wish this wasn't so washed out. Trying to adjust where the lamp is. Stretch break! Okay, be right back.
Okay. I'm going to let Puma dry a little. I'm going to move him to the side. I don't want to touch him for a second. I'm going to grab Jester. And we are going to do a quick base dry brush on her. So, I'm going to grab some of that leather brown that I was using. What we're going to do is we're going to highlight a couple of the edges of these rocks here. Now there's a lot of spots on this base where stuff had come off and it was being a little weird so what my plan is is to use that as kind of a uh, guide for where I'm going to put the snow couple of different spots. Oh, this poor base coat brush is so beat up. So, uh, for those of you guys who were hanging out with me while I was painting the white dragon and we did the snow base, um, I've got some baking powder. And I've got some Elmer's glue. And I've got some white paint. And what I'm going to do is mix them in roughly equal components. Which is going to make a heck of a lot of snow to play with. As long as I can get this sucker to come out. Blech. Is it open all the way? It feels like it's open all the way. It's just plugged up. It's going to make a mess. It's going to do one of those things where it explodes and goes all over the place. I think I had to do this last time. a lot. Might have been too much. Doing it live, guys. Doing it live. Alright. Alright. Take a bunch of this white paint. Take the back of a brush. I agree. And I had asked, like Tess and I are trying to figure out the best way to do that, which ones will work. Alright. I want one that goes up along the uh, left hand side of the part rolls over into the back and kinda has a braid that comes off the back side. 
All right. So this is my sort of tacky, snowy mix. That was one part baking powder, one part Elmer's glue, and one part white acrylic paint. I'm going to completely go nuts and wipe off the back end of this brush with this paper towel. And then I'm going to get one of my older, slightly smaller brushes. One of the ones that's kind of in not great shape. So there's the old large brush. And what you do is you just scoop it out. apply pretty much wherever the heck you want wherever you'd feel like it would get snowy what I'm going to try and do is leave some spots open but also kind of make it look like it's melting around her feet. So like she might have stepped a little over here. A little bit of footprint around the edges. Streak it a little bit on the rock. interesting thing is this stuff builds up pretty well if you've got the mix proper. You can kind of daub it in to give it some thickness to the snow. All you gotta do is build it up a little bit. <laughs> Let's see over in Discord. See, I made a whole bunch of snow. I did that last time too. I just made so much. I need to use a lot less. That's going to give us a pretty cool snowy base. Get my uh, lamp out of my 
face. And when, we, when this dries up, I'm going to take some gloss varnish and I'm going to do a gloss varnish around uh, around her boots and on her boots like they're wet but it's melting. Yeah, I made too much. I made way too much. Okay, let's get back over to Puma. Purple's looking pretty good. Actually got all of our base coats down. royal purple for that so we're gonna move up a little to start putting some shading in as soon as I finish with his skin tone so forget this last time where did I where did I step up I think I stepped up into ultramarine like to thank Port for the suggestion for the snow base for Jester. Excellent idea. Really good contrast. I'm going to grab my double zero brush. We're working with a little of, uh, we're going to do some ultramarine on the skin. Start picking out some of the skin tone highlights. Things like fingers, knuckles. Good night. We'll see you on Tuesday next week. What is it with me and eyebrows lately? Completely forgot to do the hair color on the eyebrows. Tattoo Tanith, thank you very much for the follow. Welcome to the workshop. How are you doing this evening? How's Thursday been treating you and how's the whole week been treating you? Hopefully it's been all right. Got some touch up to do down here on this elbow, I think. up a stage to, well, 
where did I go? Did I mix in? I mixed, didn't I? Did I mix into crystal blue? Well, that's too bright. I think I mixed up electric blue. Which is this brighter color. Thank you for the follow, guys, tonight. That was fantastic. I'm up to 157. Don't let my little ticker set you back. That's awesome. Hopefully we'll hit 200 by the end of the month, if I'm lucky. I may have to stream more during the days and stuff, but we might make it. And if we don't, that's okay, because I'm not going to stop anytime soon. So I'm mixing the ultramarine and that electric blue together because I want to hit that skin tone that I was looking for for the other guys. Alfman88, thank you very much for the follow. Hopefully your evening has been treating you well as well as the rest of the week. Welcome to the workshop. Two new follows. Makes me very happy. Thank you very much. Just gonna gently highlight the knuckles and the fingers up high here. Put some detail into the back of his hand. All right, how is everybody doing? Hopefully we're all still having a good night. There we go. Just get in under this sleeve. the inside of the goggles huh you're wondering I'm most likely going to do a very light blue with a uh, with a white spot to sort of pick up the little glint that's the initial thought we'll see if we can get we'll see if we can get the proper effect on it it can be a little tricky sometimes to get all the way in there the back of his neck of the, uh, the higher the highlight skin tone and I'm also gonna go back and grab that warlock purple warlord purple and make sure I get this eyebrow here yeah. because he does have big bushy eyebrows do a little bit of a second coat on some of these edges and make sure that the beard is properly colored with the finer brush he's 
got a little bit of hair that comes down over the edge. He does, he really does have that Robin Williams kind of face going on. Just because this is Puma Prime, let's go with that tiny little bit of light, light blue. And just give him a little bit more. Just a tiny bit more. Just want to pick out some more of those details on him as we move along. speck of dust that's kind of floating around in front of my face and it's starting to drive me crazy. Stop it. a little bit more detail on his face. So, as far as goggles go, I'll probably use that same electric blue. I feel like he's got a couple of different lenses that slide over each other. So maybe day. And then I'm gonna grab a little bit of the white. And we're gonna go little dots up high on top of these lenses to give a little bit of a reflection. <laughs> it's very kind of you to say. I think everybody can. It's just a matter of practice. Okay. Practice, practice, practice. Patience helps. And this kind of this kind of activity actually helps you develop some patience. So you can work with it. Even if your hands are shaky, if you keep your hands together like this, what you're gonna do is you're gonna support your own hand with your other hand. So even if you're shaking, you're shaking at the same you're shaking at the same rate. And that way you can just kind of keep an eye out, and even if your hands are shaking, you can just kind of like move them at the same time. That's what I've found helps out. Um, some people it doesn't, but some people it does. And it's just a little bit of breathing, a little bit of practice, and you'll find that your hands get a lot steadier. Um, yep, I do. I've been playing D&D &D for a long time. 
Oh, did I miss Alfman? Alfman88? Did I miss that that follow? Thank you very much. I don't. Th hopefully not. Hopefully I didn't miss it. But occasionally I get kind of buried. Hey, maybe day. Thank you very much. Appreciate the follow. Lovely. Welcome aboard. All right, let's start getting into some of the details and highlights, shall we? We got the skin done. Let's get the hair. I like highlighting this hair with squid pink. I am painting this set of Critical Role minis for uh, for Delirium. He's in chat. I, what class do I enjoy playing the most? Let's see. For... I have been playing a Dragonborn fighter in a game that has been running f since 5th Ed came out for quite a while, and I very much enjoy the class and what it has to offer a party. Um, I recently played up to level 18 with Delirium and Nefastu and Improperandi um, and Aliastra uh, with a Warlock that I dipped a little into Barbarian for. Um, that was a lot of fun. It was sort of a longer, a longer payoff. But around level 14, it was pretty ridiculous. Um, the amount of ablative hit points you end up with with that particular build. Fiendish Warlock, uh, great weapon. Uh, pla packed blade packed fiendish and bear totem barbarian it means that you have a hellish amount of hit points it's kind of like a thorns build if you ever played Diablo hey Bozer how's it going and it's perfectly acceptable to lurk So, I think he's still in chat, but the Peej was the one who is running the campaign that I play the Dragonborn Fighter in. Um, again, I really enjoy I really enjoy the class as it's got a good toolbox for making lots of different things. Um, yeah, it's pretty darn satisfying when you can get when you get dug in there with a uh, with a fighter and you get your full like time to beat this guy up rotation on it, it makes horrible things battle master yep so that dragonborn is uh, level 20 battle master and uh, he does he does buckets A Valor Bard? We're getting a Bard? We're getting another Charisma? Hey! Smoke has a 19 Charisma. Okay. You guys just don't let him talk to people. <laughs> that happened when we hit level 4. He had a 17 Charisma. I gave him 2. And I do not speak all the relevant languages. So that is a problem. All right, hair and skin taken care of. Let's move on to, let's move on to the purples. Yep, Eldritch Knights are fun. I don't know, it really depends. I'm sort of, I'm sort of big on, on finding the character and then playing the class 
as a compliment to the character. So, I mean, I've enjoyed Warlock, even though it was a longer payoff. I've enjoyed Fighter immensely. I really like Rogues. Um, I have yet to get the opportunity to play a Druid, like a full-on, like, oh, let's play a Druid Druid. Um, because everybody, like in, in other games I've been playing, there's been another one. Uh, and... Um, I have a cleric in the pipeline as a as a backup in the event that something happens to any of the other characters that I'm hoping to play, but I've got a lot. I've got a lot. Yeah, exactly. Alright, let's move up in the world of purples. I'm gonna move up to the hexed lichen color. But yeah, I mean, I've got, man, I'd love to be able, I'd love to be able to uh, break out a uh, Arcane Trickster Rogue, um, potentially even like a Mastermind. Uh, I've got a bunch of ideas for Bards. Um, oh yeah, Elfna is, is a fantastic character and completely different, which is nice because you can play, like you could have a party that's entirely fighters or entirely druids, or entirely rogues, or whatever, and they can all be a lot different. It's just the personality and how you choose to play it. Alright, so, moving up. Hex Blaken. Yeah, a full druid party would be uh, kind of bonks. Now I put too much paint on that palette, but that's okay. We're going to play around with it anyhow. Need a bigger brush. I'm going to go with the zero. Part of me wants to do, like, a full druid party would be terrifying. A full, um, a, a full bard party would be hilarious. Um, any, any of the classes as a full party could be really, really interesting. It's just a, a matter of getting a full party of players that are willing to go all in like that. Because it isn't necessarily all cobalt party. It isn't necessarily something that everybody wants to do. But in the event that it does happen, Leave that panel because I might do it as a as a golden yellow stripe. That sounds kind of cool. Um, in a friend of mine, so uh, I'm in another game where. There is an Artificer Ranger. Um, he's a dwarf, though, so slightly different than yours, but still a really interesting combination. He wants to have all the little, like, turrets and stuff. I have not dipped into that because I haven't... There's just so many options, it's hard to... It's hard to be able to uh, get into everything. In the game, uh, in that game with the Artificer Ranger, there's um, a bunch of other folks. We have a full druid, we have a bard druid. Um, I'm playing a monk paladin, which is interesting because the two classes really don't work well together. Rules is written. Like really 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 don't want to work well together a paladin you want to have like sword and board or a big old honking whacker stick 
two-hander sword or something like that. Um, and a monk is just like, I don't want armor and I don't want weapons. And as far as, as far as the rules for using spell slots for a smite go, it isn't necessarily super clear. So luckily the DM in the game has said, no, 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 no. Unarmed attacks are weapon attacks. You may smite. And I was like, thank you. Nice. Uh, Delirium does an interesting method for rolling stats that he's done the past two two runs, um, where he has everybody in the in the party uh, roll three d six, uh, four d six, and drop the lowest. So everybody essentially rolls what the standard array for the game is going to be, and he fills in anything extra. So everybody has the same standard array pool and everybody has rolled dice to achieve that standard array pool so it's kind of neat because essentially everyone gets to everyone gets to contribute yeah wow I imagine if they survive, if they hit level 5, that is going to start seriously tipping in favor of the party because then you should get some big honking spells. Is it like all wizards or is it like a couple of wizards and a couple of sorcerers? And like a warlock or something, or the first option almost sounds like old school Iron Man rolls, except you get to add the six, which will help you. out considerably. I just I really like purple. I want to can I just put that out there? I really like purple. <laughs> trying to be nice and careful as we move along. You just gently follow the contours of the robe. You end up with a very, very nice blend. Nice. Okay, so you've got a mix of classes that just all happen to be arcane casters. They've all dipped into arcane or start arcane, which is really cool. That's probably a, an awfully versatile group. get in here 
add a little splash that fades to the darker color. Yes, perfect. And now let's work up on the top part. Okay, so he's got a lot of interesting little details in here that I'm going to play around. A lot of weird little contours and nooks. He's got these weird little suspenders going on. I mean, I don't know how I would not have known that he was going to have suspenders because it makes so much sense. Just with the NPC itself, like, suspenders, absolutely. It's just a silly little, one of those little details that doesn't, like, if now that I've seen them, if he didn't have them, I'd be very disappointed. Definitely needs the suspenders. So we're looking for the ridges. And we're just going to pick out some of these little filigree details I'm painting over, but it's because I'm going to go back and I'll hit them with a slightly different color later. So I'm just I'm trying to basically get the contours of uh, the robe, uh, the, the clothing itself. I'm not worrying too much. about some of the other bits because like I say earlier on some of the other parts we'll go back and we'll hit those. No problem Louis Bob. Thanks for swinging in. I appreciate the visit. Take care of yourself. Have a lovely weekend. <laughs> I totally understand. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of times at the beginning I'm doing base coats and sort of blocking out where we're going to be moving as far as color and stuff in the future of the of the mini as we go forward. So popping in at the end you'll end up seeing a bit more detail work which I imagine can be more interesting because you start seeing what's closer to the finished product. Okay, um, so I'm going to use this. This is Orc Blood. It's a uh, Army Painter War Paint. It'll give me a slightly lighter purple-ish tone. And it will let me get some more highlights. Sticking with the same brush to make sure our paint is nice and thin. Thank you. Thank you, maybe. I like working in very sort of gradual stages on some of the character figures. You get a couple little little extra highlight colors here and there and it really brings out the texture.
sometimes it's tricky because you want to go you want the purple to really show but if you go too crazy you end up going to pink too quickly when you don't necessarily need to Occasionally, highlighting darker colors is trickier. Because you gotta work a little more subtly. But again, I think Improper and I mentioned it. It's it's a exercise in patience as well as keeping your hands steady. You sort of just kinda of have to understand how things work. Hopefully the stream feed didn't just cut out. Uh, a while. Um, I mean, I, I started painting miniatures when I was 17. I got into Warhammer at a hobby shop in the next town over and uh, my brother and I started painting like 3,000 points worth of goblins and orcs. So that was a lot of practice. That was a good, a good way to start. It's just high volume, simple. So, yeah, like 28 years, I guess. I worked at a games workshop. I managed it for a while. I played Warhammer for a very long time. I uh, did a lot of painting contests. Did a lot of miniatures. Again, it's one of those things that was, it was high volume. I got to the point where I was you know, doing a lot of them for the display cases at work. Um, but I mean, the nice part about that is I could show people what I was doing because I could paint them in the shop and kind of help instruct some of the newer the newer people to the hobby. And we'd sit and we'd hang out, sort of chat about what was going on, what their what their favorite armies were, what their the best games they had, about the worst games they had. How they learned from it, and I had I had kids I had every every stripe. It was great. I had some jocks. I had some band kids. I had some some nerdy guys. Like we were sort of click agnostic. It was nice. Oh, five minute warning. I guess I've been kind of zoning. <laughs> I do intend to watch it this evening. Thank you for the warning. Looks like I might still be working on Puma on Tuesday. I'm not going to complain. I enjoy the figures. He's got a lot of detail on him, so... This will be cool. I mean, we are very nearly finished with him anyway. Got a little bit too much on the brush. Let me get this ridge right here.
Hey, hey charms, how's it going? Caught me in the last five minutes. Playing with some subtle purple shading on this guy. Plus I gotta finish the bracers. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna bounce over to critical roll pretty soon. Waiting on that. So, Pumat's coming along really well. I'm really happy with the way the purple is coming out. It's good. It's a, there's a lot of subtle to it, so it might be hard to see on camera. We'll get some better pictures, and I'm going to do another stage or two highlights on him. As we move forward, uh, let's grab. Okay, we'll go to the end soon screen. There we go. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm going to bounce over to the critical role stream. So I don't know if any of you guys are coming with. But we're going to pop... We're going to finish up Jester's base here. With the proper color border. Since we got, since the snow has dried, finish this up. Cool. All right, everybody. Thank you very much for coming by this evening. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Thanks to the new friends and thanks to the new follows. We will hope to see you guys on Tuesday next week if you are available. Jester's got her snow base done. Pumat is very nearly finished. Got a little bit more work to do on him. And we'll start on something interesting on Tuesday. Have a lovely evening, everybody. Take care of yourself. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next time.